Amen. I hope and pray today that you know, know that victory in Jesus Christ for sure. Ruth's not here often, but just so y'all know, y'all can recruit her to the choir. Uh, uh, you don't have to hold that paper across. Our scripture today is from Numbers chapter 1. Uh, Numbers uh, chapter 1. I'm going to start at verse 45. <clears throat> It says, So all those listed of the people of Israel by their fathers' houses from twenty years old and upward, every man able to go to war in Israel, all those listed were 603,550. But the Levites were not listed along with them by their ancestral tribe. For the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Only the tribe of Levi shall not shall, let's roll one more time, okay, and see if we can read. Only of the tribe of Levi you shall not list and you shall not take a census of them among the people of Israel, but appoint the Levites over the tabernacle of the testimony and over all its furnishings and over all that belongs to it. They are to carry the tabernacle and all its furnishings and they shall take care of it, and shall camp around the tabernacle. When the tabernacle is to set out, the Levites shall take it down, and when the tabernacle is to be pitched, the Levites shall set it up. And if any outsider comes near, he shall be put to death. The people of Israel shall pitch their tents by their companies, each man in his own camp, and each man by his own standard. But the Levites shall camp around the tabernacle of testimony, so that there may be no wrath on the congregation of the people of Israel. And the Levites shall keep guard over the tabernacle of the testimony. Thus did the people of Israel. They did according to all that the Lord commanded Moses. This is the word of God today for the people of God. Praise be to God. Amen. Amen. I hope you're still reading with us, and, and uh, I hope I hope each day that you read, you get a get a picture of God and who God is. But I will ask you this question: Why why do we got to read about numbers, right? Why? Why, why do we have to read about these people? Why, why are numbers important? But numbers are always important. And the reason I say that today is simply because each one of us are important. And you think about that and think about where we've come from the last few weeks of how, how God's called us and he, he uh, sets us apart, but not so much sets us apart, but what's unique about God is that God's presence goes with us. You know, it, it's not about us, it's about God, but God going with us, God going with the people of Israel, God leading the people of Israel. That, that was what was so special. And not only that, but God reminding the people that, hey, you're holy. Need you to be holy because I am holy. And we defined that word last week, holy, and realizing that it's, it's not perfection. You know, God's not asking us today to do something that, uh, you, uh, that he already knows is not possible, but for us to be holy. Set apart, right? Isn't, isn't that our definition? Set apart for a specific task. A specific job. And for all of us here today, we are unique and we have that specific job. We have that specific task. And it's what makes 
the church. It's what makes the people of God. So numbers, even from our text today, are important because keep in mind, God is establishing a people, okay? God is establishing a nation. They're, they're not a nation yet, but they will be one day. Might say he, he's starting from scratch, right? He's, he's chosen Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and their descendants and creating this people. And this, this people, they're, they're growing. That's why they begin to cry out in Egypt and, and to ask God, saying, God, you know, have you forgot about us? But God hadn't forgot. God sends Moses, and Moses says, leading them to the promised land and they're giving these rules and they're giving these regulations of what it means to be set apart and to be different. You know, we, we kind of grew up with these things. We, we grew up with right and wrong. We, we grew up with structure, but Israel, Israel is something different. Israel is going to be a nation that blesses all other nations because of the God that they serve. The reason that we can know God today is because of Israel and their story and their relationship with God. So, yes, numbers are important. As a matter of fact, we still do the number thing today, don't, do we not? What do we do every 10 years? It's that census, right? Do, do we want to participate in it? Do we... Do we Think, well, it's none of their business, or what, if, what, if, what are our thoughts? But numbers are important. Numbers are important because we know, it, it's especially the census, that lets, even us as West Virginia lets us know how many, what, representatives we can have where? To the House, right? It, it, the census gives us numbers that... Uh, helps respond in, in the times of emergencies. It gives money to states and all, all these things. So yes, numbers are important. And even for Israel, this, this number of the 20-year-old men that were of age to be what we would call in the army, right? It's important. And I dare say our census today lets us know, right, how many fighting people we, we uh, have if, if we were to go to war. So these numbers, the, these numbers that establish who we are. But as you think about that and as you think about Israel, nothing about any of this and their calling is easy. What do we have? Over 600,000, how, how many men and women? How many women and children over, have over a million folks? Do you, do you all want to lead a million people? I can tell you as your pastor, sometimes I don't even like leading 30 of you. Okay? And, and you, you all would say the same thing to me. Because it has its challenges, right? The more people you have, the uh, we're all become that much more different and you know we have all our own wants we have all our own desires and this that and another and yet for God to try to establish a nation to establish a people how do we figure it out and yet for you and I and as I began to think about that this week think about us as individuals and I told you not long ago, I, I enjoyed being a kid. I, I enjoyed growing up. But still, growing up as a, as a person, it's not easy, is it? You know, Rachel, I don't, she rattles on at different times. But, you know, she was asking me, I think it was this past week, what, what's your first, th what's the first thing you remember? And I told her, I, I, don't, I can't remember nothing anyway, so let alone the first thing. But, what, but what, I'll ask you, what, what do you remember growing up? You know, it, we're, we hang out for a while, we're with mom, dad, and then 
somebody tells us we got to go to school and, and uh, can be exciting, it can be intimidating, we, we go to school, all these other kids. How do, we, how do we fit in? How do we get along? Some days it's easy, some days it's not. How do we figure it out? Are teachers always right? I, I tried to tell mom and dad that they weren't right, but they told me I had to listen to them anyway, right? And I'm saying, I'm trying to use but, 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 and they said, don't matter, they're right, you're wrong. But good, good teachers, maybe diff, teachers that are a little bit more difficult, how, how, how do you live that out? And as you become older and boys realize there are girls and girls realize there are boys, how do we navigate those things? How do we, how do we navigate those times where we, we've been picked on? How do we navigate those times that we've picked on others? And I get it. Some of you are here today and not willing to be honest and they'll say that you didn't do any of those things and I don't believe you, okay? I really don't. But how, how do we navigate those things? How do we navigate when people, and you know, we're in school and they begin to ask, well, what do you, what do you want to be when you grow up, right? What, you know, we may be, still be asking ourselves that question. What, what do you want to be when you grow up? How do we navigate that? How do, how do I navigate that? You know, when, for me, it's, you know, you get that pressure. What? Where are you going to college? What? What are you going to study when you go to college? If If you don't go to college, you're not going to amount to anything. Well, guess what? I went to college, and I you can go to college and still not amount to anything. Okay, I'm living proof. And I'm not sure it wasn't my goal at the time. I bet I can show you that I can go to college and not learn anything. But how do we navigate that, okay? But more than that, how, how, how do we factor in these other things? How, how do we factor in family? How, how do we live within our families? Because we, all, we know that all our families are perfect, right? Yes? No? Well, if what's wrong with your family if they're not perfect, Okay. How do we navigate it? Because we're not perfect. We got different personalities. We got different ones. How, how do we live in the family? But more than that, when we get outside of family, how, how do we live into community? How, how do we function with others? How, how do we deal with evil? How, how, how do we accept good? How, how do we do these things? And again, I say to you today, it's not easy. And for Moses and, as, and for God as he was establishing this people, trying to show them that he was the one true God and he lays out these laws and these regulations and, you know, picking the leaders and all that goes on. What's right and what's wrong. You know, we, we're, we're kind of born and we're, we live into that, but when, you, when you're just getting started, when you're trying to establish, to establish these things, you know, why do we have to have government? Why, why do we have to have the Constitution? Why do we have to have these things, right? How do we navigate? But you see, for Israel, they do eventually enter in to that promised land. They eventually become that nation that's established by God. And when you think about it, Israel is no different than what you and I are today because God's called us to what? Be the church. To be God's family, to, to share with one another. I was reminded um, as I was coming into town, I got to thinking about even in Acts Acts chapter 2 Acts chapter 2 starting at verse 42 it says 
And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. That early church, that early church as they experienced the outpouring of the Holy Spirit as they were called into one, one body to establish this kingdom, to display their own unique gifts and their talents and how they had been set apart. And down through the years, the, the church and how we participated in the church and how we live out this gospel. And again, it's not easy. How, how do we live it out? How, how do we get along? Because the church has proved it throughout history, right? A lot of times we can't get along, correct? We haven't got along. We've, we've had our disputes. And again, I'm saying to you today, it's not easy. But still, God calls us together today to use those unique. Remember last week? If, if our whole body is the eye, where's our sense of smell? If our whole body would happen to be the nose, where would be our sense of hearing? And it's all these things that make us who we are, but it's also those things that can make us different. And you don't have to answer this today, but how many of us are here today and we're always right? Right? Or maybe let, let's rephrase it today. How many of us are here today and we like to have our own way? You know, how many of us are here today and because of our nature, because of our personality, we just don't ever say anything because we don't want to cause any problems? Y'all grin, you're, we, we know that. And you see, there, there are people that know people that are meek and we, we try to use our authority to run over each other. You see, it's not easy. It's not easy being the church today, but we're still called out. And that's why we, we challenge ourselves today to bring our unique gifts and our unique, unique talents and how we've been set apart and make up the church. And we have to understand and we have to realize that being a church is about loving God and loving others. You see, this, this, none of that's an option today. Even though we're different, even though we got different ideas and all this, we're still called to be the church. We're still called to be God's people today. And we love love each other, and we, we navigate those difficult times. Even those times that we disagree, we still navigate that. But then also those times when one of us is sick and when somebody loses a loved one, it's those times that we navigate with one another and that we can lean upon one another. That's why I believe the church is so important for us. So important today to have family and friends today that you can depend upon. And what makes that so special is when the world can see the uniqueness and the gifts of the church. But see, sometimes, what, what does the world see of the church? You ever thought about that? What's the world see sometimes? Fighting and backstabbing and 
Then we wonder why nobody wants to come to church. <laughs> I, I laugh at that, but I want you to see we're, what we're doing is not easy. What we're doing is not easy. But when we look at the bigger picture and realize how we've been set apart, we we got to step it up. I've always said this, you know, it may not be fair that other people are watching, but tough, they're watching. They're watching what we say, they're watching what we do. So we got to ask ourselves today, how do we live up to the gospel? How do we live up to be the church? And it's only, only through God. It's only through God and allowing God to love us and for us to love God and more than that, to love others. So as Elsie comes this morning and, and uh, I didn't pick up my bullet, but I know the song's Love Lifted Me. What number? 221. 221. Love Lifted Me. If you've been lifted today, God has set you apart to be holy. God has set you apart to be, be unique. And I get it, it's hard sometimes to be family, but it's not an option. Let's be his church. Let's, let, let's be his people today. Let's see others. I want to I wanna be that church at Pentecost, don't you, that God adds day by day. Week by week, those who need to be saved. And it's all about love as we stand and sing. Yes. 
Though the former things are past and the future is unknown, God's love and our place in God's realm is secure. Amen. Amen. Where has it been put? Though?